Japanese architecture has such a unique look to it and such a wonderful use of colour. So for me it was about creating a castle that was sort of somewhere between the 15th and 16th century that had then been inhabited by a modern man. And I had found some examples in Japan of traditional Japanese architecture that had been recreated as brand new, with all the varnish in place and with modern lighting. Chris saw that and thought, oh, this is just weird, it's strange, I really like it. And that's where we started. The castle set was interesting because part of the dream becomes this earthquake. So, you know, normally if you were doing an earthquake set, you'd build it onto some sort of rig that would shake it, so you'd get all those movements. You know, because of the size of the set, it wasn't feasible to do that. Wally Fister, my director of photography, is a tremendous creative ally in terms of how the story is going to unfold visually. We looked at a lot of different earthquake devices, camera devices for, for shaking the camera. But really, when you would test them, they all looked a little mechanical. And so all of the, the, the shaking and shuddering effects for the earthquake are actually done in, in the old fashioned way, just by shaking the camera. We combine that with a lot of uh, Chris Corbold, our special effects supervisor, his expertise in destruction. We always had to keep in the back of our minds that there was an earthquake going on, so all the way throughout we were pulling over statues, pulling over vases, bits of dressing. We were able to get up above and put big drop boxes, which you know, when we pressed the button it would open up some trap doors, and out lots of lightweight debris. We pre-tested everything so we knew it was safe to put Leo in there. We had him running through soft debris, you know, dropping on him and beams were dropping beside him and glass blowing behind him. And because Leo is very focused, you know that when you said you need to be here, he is there in that position. From A to B, he does exactly what you choreograph, which makes it very easy to put the effects around him. The flood in the Japanese castle really challenged Chris Corbell to put this on film for real in a massive way so that we could really put the performers in the middle of an extremely powerful event. Chris had had a plan to have these big metal shipping containers full of water, which is the traditional dump tank method of doing this kind of scene. But it became immediately apparent as we looked at the way the stunt would work that we wouldn't be able to have, certainly wouldn't be able to the actors anywhere near it, let alone really even a stunt performer. What Chris and his guys came up with for this film was this extremely clever method of using air cannons. Flooding was achieved by a series of 200 gallon pressurised containers which we hit sequentially and because they were coming from about 20 foot up high through windows it sort of created like this big wave coming towards camera. You started dealing with you know 200 gallons of water is a lot of weight so we were pressurising it to 150 pounds per square inch. More high pressure water coming into the room. We wanted more of an atomised look rather than the traditional big dump of water as it were. It's those shots you have to get right first time. It's a lot of setup. If you don't get it right first time, then you know you're into a big redress, you know, because you've got three, four thousand gallons of water now on the set. 